Now available in paperback and e-readers, Isis, all about the goddess. The goddess next door bears all in the art studio to catch a campus stalker in this action-packed Isis series mystery. Get your copy of Isis, all about the goddess in paperback and e-readers at online booksellers everywhere. Historical Couples in Crisis Now, the first person in this historical couple in crisis I'm going to be talking about is Cherie Miller. And Cherie Miller is infamously known for being the first person to use the World Wide Web to recruit a man in Jerry Cassidy to murder her husband and look to use this man to again kill her husband so that she could inherit all of his resources and then move Monkey Branch on to the next man. Now, Shereen Miller was a woman in crisis even before she ever met her husband, Bruce Miller, who was the victim of that murder in 1999. And she was a woman in crisis, I would believe, ever since the day she was born, because Shereen Miller basically was born into the culture of feminism that many Gen X children were born into, and as she was indoctrinated into this culture of feminism, she never learned how to be a help me to a man and work with a man as a partner. And because she never learned how to work with a man and submit to the authority of a man as a, as a leader in the relationship, basically what happened with Shereen Miller is she got indoctrinated into this culture of feminism and as she got indoctrinated into this culture of feminism instead of her seeing men as people she would respect and see men as leaders and authority figures she basically saw men as tools she could use to get from point a to point b and as she saw men as tools she didn't learn to respect men and that coupled with her whole attraction and excitement by the seedier side of life basically had her gravitating towards some of the most toxic men similar to the Pookies and the Ray Rays, guys who are basically raised by single mothers, guys who have no sense of leadership, and basically guys that she could go out here and use as tools Basically, this woman looked to be a user of men and looked to prey on men. And as she looked to prey on men at an early age, she basically started participating in dysfunctional behaviors that many feminist indoctrinated women do in one, looking to again be the head of the relationship and two, look to use lies and manipulation to try to manipulate men like puppets and as she looked to manipulate men, she basically was looking to again get with the sleaziest guys because she basically thought she could manipulate those guys like tools and didn't want to be in the, involved with a respectable man because a respectable man would have rules and order for her and she didn't want to be under those kind of men. So that's why she basically went out here looking for the guys who are at the bottom of the world because she could thought she could be able to have more power and control over those men. And that's what she wanted as related to relationships. And eventually, this woman, basically looking to be independent, was out here again with the seediest guys and was out on her own at the age of 16. And eventually, by the time she turned 19 years old, she eventually wound up marrying one of these guys that she wound up getting involved with and had that child and again wound up only married because of the obligation as related to being pregnant and because she was only married as related to obligation that relationship wound up falling apart wound up falling apart because Cherie Miller again did not want to be a woman and a help me in a relationship did not want to submit to the leadership and authority of a man did not want to be under the head of a man and again, because she wanted to have that power she and was in a power struggle with that man, this is why her first marriage fell apart. And for nine years, Cherie Miller started to participate in her sexual promiscuity and hypergamy 
monkey branching from man to man, monkey branching from man to man, looking for a guy with resources to get with. And even though they say she wasn't beautiful, it was that wild side that basically attracted a lot of simps and beta males to her. And basically, this woman would do anything and everything in the bedroom. Again, that sexual promiscuity is something she possibly used as a gimmick, used as a gimmick to appeal to men, men who were basically looking to get easy sex and easy access, even though this woman was a single mother. Even though this woman was a single mother, she used her body as a gimmick and easy access to that get to that body in order to get those men to get involved with her as she dropped the skid mark jockey panties and allowed these guys to participate in nuclear fusion and use this to basically be able to get taken care of by these different guys and again went on to have three two more children by two more men. Now they talk about black women being sexually promiscuous and having multiple children by multiple fathers, but Sheree Miller basically wound up having two, three children by three different fathers and basically wound up get, with, getting involved with a second husband who eventually was convicted of child abuse for hitting her child and did time in jail. So this is the type of guys she was dealing with. And, and the, the same guy was also reported for molesting his, her, one of her six-year-olds, but was found not guilty because of lack of alleged lack of evidence, but I believe it was white privilege. And Cherie Miller, by the time she was 26 years old, was basically ran through and extremely sexually promiscuous. Again, three children by three different fathers. And as she was involved with having three children by three different fathers, she was looking for the next simp to be able to take advantage of. And she found that simp in 47-year-old Bruce Miller. Bruce Miller, who was basically out here looking to start a business as related to a salvage yard called D&D Salvage in Flint, Michigan. And as he was out here looking to get his business going, he wound up hiring Cherie Miller. And after he hired Cherie Miller, this is where Bruce Miller made one of the mistakes that I talk about in my book, Stop Simping in the Workplace, by going out here and getting involved with a person at his job. Now, when it comes to your job, a man is not supposed to get involved with a woman at the job. No, a man is not supposed to get involved with women at the job because when you crap where you eat, you make a mess of everything that you have. And sadly, that's what happened with Bruce Miller, who was another one of the simps in, in Cherie Miller's life, a simp who basically thought, oh, I'll get involved with this woman who was already previously involved with another one of his co-workers. Now, this 47-year-old man got involved with this t woman who was 26 years old, who had three kids by three different fathers, and went out here and put on his Mickey Mouse galoshes and his Ben Cooper cape to play Captain Save Him, hoping to save this woman as he got involved in a relationship with her, not understanding that this woman did not see him as a person due to the dysfunctional way she was raised under the culture of feminism. No, under the culture of feminism that this woman was raised, she did not see this man as a man. She saw him as an opportunity to get access to more resources and fiscal stability. And Cherie Miller basically wanted to, again, get with this guy to just get what he had and she didn't respect that man at all even though this man basically was looking to try to build a home with her now he had been already married and divorced and had his kids but his mistake was getting involved with this woman and thinking that this woman would be somebody he could work with without critically thinking now any critical thinking man who had heard that a woman had three kids by three different men would have avoided that woman and possibly wouldn't have even hired that woman. But when it comes to simps, they are attracted to predatory women due to their low self-esteem and low self-worth. And because they are attracted to these predatory women, what they think they can get 
is easy sexual access, and they think sexual access has a higher value than their intangibles of manhood, such as their dignity, their self-respect, and their self-worth, and even their freedom and their life. And that's what happened here to Bruce Miller. He thought he could go out here, put on those Mickey Mouse galoshes, put on that Ben Cooper cape, and play Captain Save Him, and save this woman from her whole dysfunctional situation. He thought he could save her from that from that situation, and eventually wound up getting involved with a woman who was basically didn't care or respect him, because what she would do after she got involved with him and eventually got married to him was she showed no respect for this man, showed no respect for this man by going out here and not focusing on the job he hired her for because she basically had a Mary Kay side hustle going on and she was flirting with different guys and acting like she was single at the job. I mean, she was flirting with guys at the job and she was out here looking to, again, be online, chatting with different guys. And one of the guys she was chatting with was the, was the former police officer, Jerry Cassidy. Jerry Cassidy basically was a former police officer that Cherie Miller had been involved with way before she ever got involved with Bruce Miller, showing a whole pattern of one, sexual promiscuity, sexual, and also no respect for this man. Again, this woman basically was already one who could never really commit to this man in a marriage, because again, she already was numb inside because she had already had so many different sexual partners and because she had so many different sexual partners she was numb inside because she had all the, of the different spirits and dna of multiple men inside of her including her three baby daddies and with all of those men basically spirits inside of her this wound up tearing her spirit apart to the point where she became numb and detached and indifferent to men completely indifferent to men in her life and basically, again, look to use this guy, Jerry Cassidy, the former police officer, as a tool to basically be able to get access to Bruce Miller's resources without ever having to um, deal with him ever again. Because I believe with, with Cherie Miller, she basically saw this guy with this wrecking yard, and wrecking yards make very good money as a business overall. And she basically wanted to get access to his wealth. So what she did was basically have this plan, I believe, with malice of forethought before she even met Bruce Miller to take his life. She had this plan to take his life after finding out what he had and basically wanted to take that and manipulated this other guy oh, on the other side of the country, Jerry Cassidy, who was living in Las Vegas after having his career end in an ignominious fashion as a police officer. She basically was looking to find this guy and use him as a pawn and able to get rid of her husband and then eventually hope to possibly flip things on Jerry Cassidy and make him the fall guy because that's the way it works for these kind of feminist indoctrinated women. And I talk about this in depth in my book, The Woman Crisis, in a chapter called Murder and the Woman Crisis. When it comes to these kind of women, they look to murder their partners because, again, they only care about the access to the resources that that man has. And basically, we'll go out here and pit one man against the other. And after Cherie Miller got... Uh, this guy Bruce Miller to go again not only marry her but buy her a computer that she basically used to again he was meant to be for her to count to look out for her expenses because she was spending irresponsibly and only spending irresponsibly because this simp basically allowed it and as this as she was online as she was looking to again look out for her expenses she was on in AOL chat rooms in AOL chat rooms with this guy Jerry Cassidy and in those chat rooms basically planning to have an affair with this man as related to saying that she was going to a Mary Kay cosmetics convention and went to do that convention basically telling lies to Jerry Cassidy telling lies that she was this rich businesswoman and basically was somebody as she was this rich businesswoman she basically was out here looking to tell this guy that she was being abused and as she was telling him she was being abused she went out here told him 
that th this guy had basically had um, made her pregnant with twins and then said that this man was beating her up. And as she sent him, after she said this man was beating her up, she said she was pregnant and said that she sent, was pregnant and sent him a fake sonogram and then told him that she lost the baby because he graped her and then told the guy that, she, that her husband was a mafia don who would never allow her to leave, then said she was pregnant again, again with twins and set up an account in her husband's name to send, um, the, the uh, ta messages to say that he was taunting her. Again, this is the first version of a sock puppet account. So she set up an AOL account to say, oh, that the husband was threatening her, but it was her, the one sending the threatening emails. And sadly, what happened with Jerry Cassidy is that he didn't do any sort of critical thinking at all as related to things. I mean, here was a cop, but he didn't do any critical thinking that a detective would do. And he just got caught up in his feelings about this woman, basically because he had issues with addiction and issues as related to his relationship with his, with his previous wife falling apart. And basically thought that this woman was going to be in such trouble that he basically, again, wanted to put on his Power Rangers cape and his Power Rangers galoshes to play Captain Save Him to save this woman. But this woman was the villain basically manipulating both of these men and manipulating both of these men to the point where they both were going to get smashed in the face with kryptonite doo-doo from this predatory woman who, again, didn't see men as people but saw men as tools. Now, Cassidy basically thought that Bruce Miller was abusing this woman, Shereen Miller, but Shereen Miller was not being abused at all and wanted to go out here and look to use him as a tool, again, weaponizing this man, similar to the way I saw many black girls and Puerto Rican and West Indian girls weaponize drug dealers to go after guys that they didn't like. And what, what Shereen Miller did was basically arrange for Jerry Cassidy to come to the wrecking yard and come to the wrecking yard basically to murder Bruce Miller. And that's what happened sadly on November 8th of 1999. This is where Jerry Cassidy came to Bruce Miller's auto salvage business with a shotgun and shot him in the neck. And people wondered what happened to Bruce Miller. People wondered what happened to Bruce Miller. And eventually they found his body at the at the front desk of his wrecking yard and after finding the body of, of bruce miller at the wrecking yard it basically looked like a murder that was done for a robbery because that's the way shereen miller had told uh, jerry cassidy to go out here and implement execute this murder and things looked like it was going to be an open and shut thing she would basically inherit everything as related to the wrecking yard until eventually it was found that jerry cassidy went back to Vegas and committed suicide. And as they found his body, uh, found Jerry Cassidy's body, they eventually found a suitcase where they found su a suicide note. And as they found the suicide note, they found him confessing to the murder of Bruce Miller. And this is the evidence that the police used to arrest Cherie Miller. This is the evidence that they used to arrest Cherie Miller who basically, as she was arrested, got involved with another man, which showed, again, how little respect or regard she had for this simp, basically saw him as a tool, again, that she could use to do this murder, and then she would get the resources, and then monkey branch to another man, and, again, was able to attract men, because those men basically saw her as easy sexual access, they saw her as easy sexual access that they could go out here and get with. And these guys basically were out to get with her as related to her. Again, not thinking about her background. Again, here's a woman who had three different baby daddies, two husbands, and another man on the line. And again, the, the Cherie Miller was still going on, didn't care that she was on trial. And that's how cold many of these feminists are. Again, these feminists really don't have respect or regard for people. It's all about them getting what they want. It's all about them getting what they want because they don't see people as people. They don't respect human life. 
No, when it comes to the feminist indoctrinated woman, she basically sees guys as tools she can monkey branch from due to her greed at, that is based on her hypergamy. And that's what Sheree Miller was doing from guy to guy. And again, eventually managed to try to manipulate the courts, look to manipulate the courts, and look to try to make it look like, oh, this note that confessed to the murder shouldn't have been admitted, wanted to do this, and eventually managed to finesse her release for a limited time as the courts appealed things. And as things were appealed, she then went on to have her four, third or fourth husband in Michael Donye. And as she got with Michael Donye, who, again, was another simp. Now, he came from a close-knit family and thought, he could get with this convicted murderer, not seeing that this woman was a user. This woman was a user who didn't regard human life. And he got with her, and eventually she got her freedom. And as she got her freedom, eventually she thought she was going to go on and do things like she was working at the comedy shop as a video and photo editor and was working at, at, at the comedy. That's what she was claiming. She was talking about things about deadbeat dads, but never really wanted to talk about how she was a female creditor and went out here looking to go out here and rebuild her life because she just didn't care about anyone and didn't care about her children and because she had her mother to go out here and raise her children and again, raise her children because she basically didn't care about anyone. But eventually she wound up with, the, while she got this appeal and got her conviction overturned for a minute, eventually the judges order, wound up oh, getting another appeal, which reversed that whole conviction. And Cherie Miller was ordered back to jail to serve her original 81-year sentence for the murder of Bruce Miller. I mean, she was sentenced again back in 2009 or 2010 or so for the murder of Bruce Miller. And eventually she wound up writing a confession admitting to her a culpability after the appeals wound up getting overturned. And that basically shows the, again, depraved indifference and, and just lack of regard for human life that Shereen Miller had. But all of that came primarily due to the dysfunctional way Shereen Miller was raised. The way she was raised was never to take accountability or take responsibility for herself. And since she was raised to, again, not take that accountability or responsibility for herself, she didn't care about anyone because nobody made her accountable for herself. And with this whole, again, indoctrination in the feminism, she wanted to, again, she never saw people as tools. She never saw people as people. She saw people as tools she could use, again, to get from one station in life to the next. And sadly, all of that lack of regard for human life is the main reason why Sheree Miller basically went from being a girl who was on the road to being a woman that but became a feminist. And this feminist basically wound up on the road to becoming a woman in crisis, a woman in crisis who's currently in the penitentiary, currently in the penitentiary because she was a clear and present danger to everyone because she doesn't care about anyone and because the only person she cares about is herself. This is why she's in the penitentiary right now, locked up for life. Now, the second person I'm going to be talking about in this historical couple in crisis is Jerry Cassidy. Now, Jerry Cassidy was the man that Shereen Miller weaponized to take the life of her husband, Bruce Miller, as she chatted online. And Jerry Cassidy is one of those guys who is a, what they call textbook nice guy, who basically was a textbook beta male, like I talk about in my book, The Man Crisis. Now, when it comes to nice guys, a lot of these guys really are extremely inexperienced as related to socializing in the world. And that makes it where these men can be easily targeted by predatory people who seek to take advantage of them. And sadly, with Jerry Cassidy, he was one of these quote unquote nice guys who was a textbook beta male. And this beta male basically was living in a rose colored reality where he idealized and imagined himself becoming an FBI agent. And as he idealized and imagined himself becoming an FBI agent, he, he went out here thinking he could take that road. 
as related to being a Cass County, Missouri police officer and thought that he could go out here and be this good man, not understanding when it came to law enforcement. Law enforcement is a place where it's a gray area and everything isn't black and white. And as Jer Jerry Cassidy was again, was looking to build his career, he was a, one of these nice guys who thought he could go out here and expose all the corruption within the police department. But that whole plan that he thought that could elevate his status, the covert contract he created in that whole rose-colored reality he was in was basically shattered when brass at the Cass County Police Department basically wound up retaliating against him, shunning him, and demoting him as related to de his career and derailing his career. And as his career got derailed, that's where this nice guy found out that doing what he thought was the right thing was not going to be right for him because as he wound up falling apart as related to his career, he basically was in a place where he had to eventually wind up leaving the police force in an ignominious fashion. And that basically led to his personal life falling apart because his dreams of becoming a police, a, a FBI agent wound up getting shattered because his record as a police officer were basically destroyed. And this led to him winding up with his marriage falling apart because usually with most women, they wind up again, when they see their man not doing well, they look to monkey branch to another man when it comes to nice guys. Because when it comes to nice guys, nice guys usually attract female predators to them who basically look to use a man as a tool. And basically, this is what basically devastated Jerry Cassidy as related to his first relationship with his first wife. And that whole situation had him in a place where his mind wasn't in the right place. He was emotional. And as he was emotional, he started to look to escape through alcohol and drugs. And as he looked to escape through drugs and alcohol, he wound up in a place where he was, and I talk about in the man crisis as related to addiction and the man crisis, looking to escape the failures of his life. And eventually, as he looked to escape the failures of his life, this took him from Cass County, Missouri, all the way to Reno, Nevada, where he got another job as a pit boss at Harris Casino and Hotel. And that was the worst place he could be as a nice guy, because when it comes to nice guys, the last place any guy wants to be is a casino, because you're surrounded by predators all around you. But sadly, this nice guy never had a man possibly in his life to teach him about masculinity and manhood and male life skills and male survival skills. And sadly, this guy wound up in a place that was filled with predators. And sadly, even though he was in this place filled with predators, could not learn those male life skills in order to be able to be able to read a room or read people. This is something nice guys don't know how to do, especially with women. And what happened as this lonely man was in this place in Nevada, he started talking to people online because I believe he basically was socially awkward. And as he was socially awkward, he wound up online talking to Cherie Miller. And this nice guy basically wound up in a situation that many simps wind up in, getting involved with a female predator. And uh, like I talk about in my book, Stop Simp and Why Men Don't Need Finance to Get Romance, when it comes to simps and female predators, they again basically are attracted to each other. And many of the female predators are attracted to simps because they know that these men are very naive. They know these men are very gullible. And they know that these men really don't have any seasoning. And sadly, when it came to Jerry Cassidy, he didn't have any seasoning because, again, there was a guy who was living in a rose-colored reality. And as he was living in a rose-colored reality as related to things, he saw things from an idealized view. And he couldn't really think critically about this whole situation as related to Sheree Miller. I mean, he couldn't think critically at the time. Now, I know it was 1999 and there wasn't any online dating. And he was in these chat rooms with Sheree Miller. But any critical thinking man would have looked at Sheree Miller and wondered, why is this woman online? This is something I talk about in my book, Stop Simping in Cyberspace. But this f former police officer didn't have that ability to be able to read people. And because he couldn't read people and critically think, 
he wound up getting involved with Sheree Miller. And as he got involved with Sheree Miller, he basically wound up in the web of this Black Widow. And as he got involved in the web of this Black Widow, he thought he had basically gotten involved with a woman. But the whole thing was he was getting involved with a toxic woman because, again, quality women are not online and talking to someone as related to things. No, quality women are usually with their man and are involved with their man. And this guy couldn't, again, connect the dots as related to that situation. And since he couldn't connect the dots as related to that situation, this is how the simp wound up getting involved with Cherie Miller online and thought he would be able to have a relationship with this woman who was basically a married woman. Now, this online affair eventually became physical when Cherie Miller then lied to her husband, Bruce Miller, and then went over to Reno, Nevada to go meet with Jerry Cassidy. And as she met with Jerry Cassidy, she then told Jerry Cassidy a whole lot of lies about how she was this rich businesswoman living with a disabled husband and then this guy began basically believed everything that she said. And again, this simp basically was mesmerized by that taste of an opportunity to get a taste of the atomic waste from the special place. Basically thought he was going to get some easy sexual access and had no qualms about sleeping with this married woman. And that's basically what this woman used to prey on him as she dropped the skid mark Fruit of the Loom draws, and as she dropped those skid mark Fruit of the Loom draws and allowed him to get that taste of the atomic waste from the special place, this guy basically wanted to be taken because he wanted to take advantage of that easy sexual access. And as he looked to take advantage of that easy sexual access, this is where he wound up getting taken. Now, some would say that this guy basically got played because he didn't know what he was doing because of the drugs and the alcohol, but I believe what happened with this guy is that he had low self-esteem, he had low self-confidence after losing his dream job and an opportunity at his dream job, losing his marriage and his ability to have a relationship with his wife and his child. And what happened to this guy is that he wanted a win badly because a lot of simps they want to win badly, and for them, the sexual conquest basically makes them feel confident. And as they can hold up those ra those those raggedy skid mark fruit of loom draws, they feel like they've basically achieved something. And that's what happened here with Cherie Miller. He thought he basically had something, and as related to this affair, and this affair went on and continued after they had that sexual encounter. And after they had that sexual encounter, they continued on with their online relationship, exchanging emails, and then basically meeting for some casual sex here and there. And that's where Cherie Miller basically got him hooked, hooked on the pussy. And as he got him hooked on the pussy, she basically used that to use this guy as a tool, a tool who basically thought he was going to be able to have a relationship with this woman, not understanding that if you get involved with a woman who will cheat on you, she will cheat, um, not cheat with you, will cheat on you. And that type of woman, basically, if she cheats with you, will cheat on you. Moreover, that woman who looks to go out here and use you in an affair is basically going to use you as a tool. And that's basically what she did was get this guy hooked on the pussy and as he basically got mesmerized by the stench from that atomic waste reactor this is what she used to again manipulate this guy telling her how much she loved him when she didn't love him she was basically using him as a tool using this simp as a tool to be able to get him to do what she needed and basically wanted to get this guy on the hook and use that as leverage now, as she got leverage over Jerry Cassidy, this is where she went and started running the story that Bruce Miller was abusive. And this is where this guy didn't have any critical thinking, because if this man was, again, paralyzed, as she said, this man couldn't be as abusive because you would have to get in within distance of him. And again, even if that was the case, 
she could go to the police to go deal with this man. And again, this guy wasn't really critically thinking because he was hooked on vagina. And again, because he was thirsty for the vagina, he got caught up in this as related to that narrative. And she used makeup to make it look like she was getting beat up by this man. And then, as she was saying she was getting beat up by this man, she then said that she got pregnant by Cassidy and said he was the father of her baby and went as far as sending him a fake sonogram and putting pushing out her stomach to make it look like she was pregnant and then told him that she lost the baby because her husband graped her, which, again, this makes no logical sense. Again, if this man had graped her, she should have gone to the police, but this cop couldn't really connect dots, even though the stories got more and more absurd. Now, she wanted to go on and say her husband was a mafia, Don. Now, this is where the story gets absurd, but when you're a simp, again, simps get emotional, and simps, when they get emotional, don't really think critically because all they're thinking about is their fear of having their sexual access being taken away from them. They're afraid of losing the sexual access to the point where they don't even think critically about more important things like their intangibles, like their freedom and their life. And sadly, that's where this guy Jerry Cassidy was going. Again, in his feelings about a woman who had, no, again, no respect for him because if she would cheat with him, she would cheat on him. And this woman, after saying she lost a baby, said that she was pregnant again and sent him another um, thing to tell him that she was pregnant, this time saying that she was pregnant with twins and patted herself up. And then to further escalate things, made it look like the husband had found out about the affair. And as she made the husband, uh, made it look like the husband had found out about the affair, she made a fake sock puppet online account and made threats to him. And this guy, again, never contacted AOL or contacted police. And then after having this guy make these threats, she then claimed the husband had his people violently gang grape her until the twins were killed. Now, all of this makes no logical sense to a regular man who would sit there and critically think and say, this whole pattern of behavior that took place over two years made no logical sense. I mean, how could a woman get pregnant two times in two years and like this? It makes no logical sense. And this man is going to be beating her up and... In our culture, where people will call the police on you for domestic violence, this guy, this woman is going to say that she, this, all this happened because of, a, again, mafia, when mafia really isn't in Michigan like that. And again, wanted to go out here and tell one lie after the other. And then she didn't know that this guy, again, had a tubal ligation. Um, she wanted to say that Cassidy didn't know that Miller could not have any more children because of a tubal ligation. That I'm going to correct myself. Now, she couldn't have any more children, so this guy basically was getting played because he didn't, he didn't understand what was going on because, again, he was caught up in his feelings, and as he was caught up in his feelings, he didn't know what was going on, and this simp basically, again, caught up in his feelings, basically was told all about this abuse, told all about this abuse, and basically Shereen Miller used this to weaponize this guy Jerry Cassidy, weaponized Jerry Cassidy, and sent him on a kamikaze mission to go murder Bruce Miller, sent him on this plan to go murder Bruce Miller, and as he was sent out there in his feelings as related to believing that he had lost his children, this is where Jerry Cassidy again ran out here on his feelings looking to murder Bruce Miller, looking to murder Bruce Miller as related to something he did not do, and all because this man, again, was acting on his impulses and caught up in his feelings, all caught up in his feelings about a about continuing to maintain sexual access with this female predator, looking to maintain sexual access with this female predator, who was looking to, again, not didn't have any respect or regard for him because basically she saw this guy as a tool, saw him as a tool. She could basically, again, get him out of the way so that she could go out here and be with other guys because when it comes to these kinds of situations, what these women do is they'll be out here with a guy. They won't like that guy anymore. And as they're out here and they're tired of this guy, they got another dude on the side. So what they do is find a nice, big, fat, juicy simp, 
find that big fat juicy simp, tell him a story, send him out here in his feelings, and as they send him out here in his feelings, they know that this nice guy is green, they know that this nice guy is inexperienced, they know this nice guy doesn't really know anything about women and doesn't know one principle I talk about in my book, Stop Simping, Why Men Don't Need Finance to Get Romance, that women lie and they lie all the time. And that's why you can't take anything they say as the truth. No, you got to watch a woman's actions. And if a woman is out here married to another man and is looking to have an affair with you, again, that's woman, that woman is not loyal to you at all. And that's where you got to start critically thinking. Once that woman says, oh, I got a husband, I got a man, and she's in your face, that's already the term for you, time for you to get out of there because if she'll do this dude dirty, she's going to do you dirty. But sadly, when it came to Jerry Cassidy, he didn't have a man to teach him this. And this is sad because he was around male-centered environments like the police department and I don't think he was able to to be able to be a good cop there because he was again looking to be this again nice guy and again in the business of police again there's a difference between nice and good a good cop again understands his job and understands his job is to be able to make sure that he's taken care of but this guy wanted to be the nice guy and again have the smooth world where everything was good but the whole thing is it made it bad for him, and that put him on a bad road where he was targeted by predators, put him on a road where he was targeted by predators, and basically this predator set him up for the, to participate in this murder, and after she set him up, she basically was going to possibly make it where he was the fall guy, because when it comes to these kind of women, as I've seen ever since I was 16 years old, basically they'll have it where one guy will be the victim, the other one will be dead, and while that guy is in prison, what will happen is, is that guy, basically, she'll be out here getting her back blown out by another man, and sadly in the case of Jerry Cassidy, he only caught on later, and after he killed Bruce Miller, this is where he finally caught on. And as he caught on, he realized his life was basically over at that point. But before he wound up taking his own life, what Bruce Miller, well not Bruce Miller, but um, what Jerry Cassidy did was go out here and look to implicate this woman, Cherie Miller, in the murder of her husband. And that's how he hoped to possibly atone for his crime. He hoped to atone for the crime because he already knew that if he was to stay alive, he would be in a horrible situation as a former police officer. As a former police officer, he would be in prison for the rest of his life and be in the prison with people he arrested like Bubba, Tiny, Roscoe, Big Dave, Melvin, and Mr. Sprinkles. And they would possibly be trading him for Little Debbie snack cakes, ramen noodles, packets of Crystal Light lemonade, packets of Crystal Light tea, off-brand fruit punch, off-brand grape drink, off-brand lemon lime drink, off-brand orange drink, off-brand peach punch, off-brand strawberry drink, off-brand multi-berry drink, off-brand Oreo cookies, off-brand duplex cookies, off-brand vanilla wafers, off-brand ginger snaps, Fritos chips, hot and sour pickles, um, beef sausages, packets of soy sauce, packets of sriracha sauce. He would be getting traded for all the commissary, and they would be making bricks as they stuffed him with the special sausage and spit roast him, and Mr. Sprinkles would have a smile on his face as he sprayed him in the face and the backside with a special sauce, and then split the cheeks open and let everyone on cell block D know that his backside looks like the inside of a Louisiana crunch cake. Now, Jerry Cassidy, knowing that that would be his fate, basically wound up again taking his life and took his life because he realized he was not going to have a relationship with Cherie Miller and basically possibly felt set up that she basically was set him up for this. And again, she broke it off in December. And as she broke it off, this dude basically realized he was a patsy, basically realized he was a patsy of this woman who basically, again, used him as a tool, used him as a tool to basically be out here, used him to get this guy out of the way so that she could get his money. And after she got his money, she was out here possibly with another dude. And that basically devastated Jerry Cassidy, 
who felt like he was the ultimate simp who got played and the only thing he was going to get was that life sentence in prison while she was going to go on with her life. And that's where Jerry Cassidy basically wound up writing the confession and put it in a briefcase in his apartment and then took his life. And after his body was removed, the family found that briefcase with the suicide note and an envelope taped to it implicating Cherie Miller. And this was the way that Jerry Cassidy finally got even with Cherie Miller, finally got even with Cherie Miller with this confession that would eventually be used in court to get her locked up for 81 years. Now, Cherie Miller thought she could again pull a finesse. She had already gotten another man to go get with and looked to hope to go on with her life after she got an appeal, but eventually the appeal was overturned and basically Cherie Miller wound up going back to prison and Jerry Cassidy finally got his justice, finally got justice as related to his unjust actions of adultery that he wound up in, wound up in because again, he was raised in a way to not understand how life worked because he was one of these nice guys who was caught up in ideals and as he was caught up in ideals, he couldn't see the reality of real predators, real predators who would go out here and prey on people, real predators like prey on people like Cherie Miller. Cherie Miller basically saw Jerry Cassidy as a tool. And again, this guy wound up a tool because he didn't have the life skills to learn how to navigate life as a man. And sadly, because he didn't get the life skills to learn how to navigate life as a man, this is how Jerry Cassidy wound up on the road to losing his life and becoming yet another man in crisis. Now, if you want to learn how to identify predatory women like Cherie Miller, you can pick up my book, Stop Simping, Why Men Don't Need Finance to Get Romance, to learn how to identify these kinds of women and avoid them. And you can also pick up my ebook, Misadventures of Cat and Save Them, and learn why you don't get involved with predatory women and learn how to identify predatory women in the real life. And when it comes to being online, my book, Stop Simping in Cyberspace, will also help you to be able to identify female predators like Cherie Miller online as related to the way they present themselves online. And that book will basically say, possibly save your life and help you avoid dealing with female predators that come from today's modern era, such as e-girls and other women who are on places like Instagram and social media. Now, if you want to learn what leads to many beta males like um, Jerry Cassidy winding up getting jammed up, you can pick up my book, The Man Crisis, on Amazon.com in paperback and Kindle format. You can also find The Man Crisis at other online booksellers, and that book will tell you all about the pattern of the beta male, how to identify the pattern of the beta male, and how to break out of the paradigm of the beta male. And my other book, The Woman Crisis, which is the companion to The Man Crisis, will teach you how the difference between a feminist and a woman and how their behaviors basically are predatory and how these women with this mindset are out here participating in predatory behavior, looking to prey on dysfunctional men and use them for tools like this tragedy that took place back in 1999. Now, this video was requested by a viewer, and if you want to request a video, you can drop a donation for a minimum of $15 to the Cash App or the PayPal by clicking the links in the description box. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe. Now available for the first time in paperback, Stop Simping in the Workplace. Men, learn what you need to know in order to protect your job from workplace predators with Stop Simping in the Workplace. Available in paperback at online booksellers everywhere. Now available in paperback. From the author of the critically acclaimed book, The Man Crisis, comes The Woman Crisis. Learn why so many women have become lost in their quest to have it all in The Woman Crisis. Get your copy of The Woman Crisis in paperback at Amazon.com and online booksellers today. Support black-owned and black-operated digital broadcast media. www.niceradionetwork.com Nice Radio Network, broadcasting 24 hours a day, 7 days a week.